Hi all, my name is Mark. Um, truly happy to be here. Uh, I hope like you guys will enjoy this, the, the conference uh, from now on, on, especially now when you hear the <laughs> the amazing story of Bridge Race. Um, I will briefly will go uh, um, about my studio, about Supersonic uh, Studio, and then we will focus on uh, Bridge Race uh, case study. Awesome. Uh, so, Supersonic Studios, we are a house of games, we do hyper-casual games, we're a publisher, uh, we do in-house development, uh, and we are here for one year and three months. Um, pretty young, uh, pretty young publisher, yet um, really impressive number of published games so far. So we have like 27 games published so far, and eight of them published this year only, uh, which shows the, the amazing pace and... Uh, uh, capabilities, uh, capabilities of ours. Um, these 27 games uh, within one in three years wouldn't be possible without the 100 talented people that make in Supersonic. Um, we are spread all over the business. We do, uh, everyone uh, professionalize in each uh, his own field, monetization, growth, product, um, creative, etc. Uh, actually, the mix of all this professionalism allows us to make these great uh, games and publish in supersonic uh, speed. Um, you could actually go and join our webinar on Wednesday uh, just to hear more about the uh, publishing final supersonic. Anyway, uh, as we are speaking, as we are right now, and Moby Dictum. Um, Conference, which is a uh, leading media source for uh, for games in, in Turkey. Um, I found like interesting to mention that three of our games published recently were published uh, together with uh, Turkey-based studios, Get Rich, Mad Dogs, Bridge Race. And I, uh, I want to see next time that we are speaking to see that list much, much longer. And actually, it's a great opportunity to um, to show and to introduce you to the, the second Supersonic Superstar Contest um, with a really, really impressive prizes. Uh, good opportunity to just enter the enter of Hyper Casual and publish your games uh, with a leading publisher in the industry. And now we will move to the interesting part of the, uh, the session, and this is the Bradrys. Bridge Race success story. Um, I'll start with this game, telling a little about the studio that actually stands behind this amazing game. Uh, Garwell Games, uh, Istanbul-based uh, studio, founded and led by Nebi Basaran, a uh, dear friend of mine, um, really talented team of eight guys doing Unity, doing uh, art, doing uh, game design, finance, um, really talented as far as you'll see in a, in a, in a few slides from now. Um, the studio has been there for more than two years, um, made more than 50 games, tried, worked with different publishers, uh, but didn't succeed to publish so far. Um, Spoiler. <laughs> and uh, basically on November 2020, Garwell Games joined Supersonic, joined forces uh, to make great things together. Um, I'll mention in this, uh, this point, I'll mention the fact that uh, Garwell uh, Studio is looking for, um, looking, looking to grow and looking for game designers and developers. Uh, so go to their LinkedIn page and check the, the openings. Um, Garwell, oh, sorry, Garwell came to Supersonic and as part of um, the standard process, when we welcome the studio, uh, the new partner, we are trying to align our methodology, the way we work, trying to see what we as a publisher that, that have all these entities, services, products, um, tools within, uh, within our company, what the studio and the developer need in order to achieve his success. Um, so from the very from the very beginning, from the very first call with uh, with the studio, we realized that it's a uh, amazing uh, collaboration, amazing partnership that's going to be established here. Really good vibes. 
but beyond that we just set for ourselves some plan how we're going to establish this partnership this cooperation um as far as the studio had this um really impressive portfolio of games uh we decided that we to first of all look at the games and see put on the on the paper clearly what are the games uh what were their success whenever they were tested and just to look at this list to check to to pick the most potential titles retest them uh by that way uh to establish uh, the the, 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 the collaboration the work uh and maybe we will be able to go and iterate and and succeed with one of these games um of course the studio received the access for ourselves self publisher uh platform um just uh, direct access to the testing uh, dashboard as well as dedicated publishing manager which is me and a talent and game designer from our side which is Soren uh to lead the studio to to its success so i will go um to the next slide which represent the pre-story the evolution of the game and these two games you will see like you see right now in your in front of you are not really reminds you of bridge race but in fact it's the father and the grandfather of bridge race right so uh, back in december 2019 the studio uh, developed this game called fill holes 3d which is kind of a golf that you collect out of balls and bring them to the hole a um, few months later they did the shift uh, to implement the io mechanics in the game uh, give it a sense of competition, uh, make the game more interesting. Uh, that was really interesting at the time. As you see, the game has been published and uh, tested, sorry, uh, with uh, uh, other publisher and get these impressive metrics of CPI of 10 cents and retention of 38%. Um, but because the metrics were below uh, the other publisher's benchmark, the game never moved to soft launch or global launch um which we're thankful <laughs> thanks for uh yet it was important to me to show you what was the ideation of the game and how we made the game in, two, in 2021 that actually started in 2019. um as i said november 2020 all right the studio joined supersonic and actually we are retest, starting to retest their previous games Ball fighters, as you see, had 10 cents at the time, uh, CPI of CPI, and it was uh, kind of a potential title that we wanted to retest. And we retested it in November, um, and it got a really impressive metrics of $1.8, uh, which is too high even to consider further. Uh, yet, uh, I put this slide here mainly to show you the difference and the gap and the change the game could uh, could uh, pass through nine months, right? So you have the February, it was 10 cents, and December, November, this uh, the, the, that same year, the CPA, uh, the CPI scaled uh, like enormously. Um, hyper casual market is a very sensitive market, uh, requires uh, hyper casual speed of publishing and trend developments. Um, that's a great example of it. So you will probably ask yourself, so why why you guys kept with this game? Um, and it's a really good question. I'm happy that you ask yourself that one. Uh, we, as a, as a publisher, before we're killing a game, we discuss it, right? We, we were approaching the studio and we're trying to discuss and negotiate to think how we could utilize, reuse, recycle, you know, find the word of the previously made uh, concept that. At, at some point of his life was really potential. How we could take this stuff, change it, emerge in it, adjust it to something and made it uh, new, right? And that that way we, we suggested the studio uh, to implement several uh, changes in the game. So basically bricks shapes were really, really uh, trendy at the time, right? That's, that's, we have several games uh, strongly in the top charts using the bricks. So this shape was pretty trendy at the time. Um, ball fighters, balls swiped to bricks. 
that was one of the changes. Dynamic growth. We saw the factor, the element of of players willing to collect something within the game and distribute to spend it, right? So it's not that you're collecting something and get the coins by the end of the game, you collect something and you spend it within the game itself. So uh, bringing, visualizing this element, if you can, if you can, uh, if you can um, see the, the implementation of this change is basically building the bridge, right? So you're collecting the bricks and you distribute them through the bridge. And one of the things that uh, has been trend and trendy and still uh, really, uh, really trendy these days is the movement from A to B. Uh, so we have the sand uh, sandbox, which is kind of close area, but moving forward and giving the sense of progression within the level itself, it's uh, something that works well. So we did bridge race, gave it a new name, a new game, uh, and December, mid-December, we tested and we got a not wow results at all. It was one even more than one dollar CPI. Uh, the metrics were twenty six percent and four hundred and seventy seconds of playtime, which wasn't wow at all. Uh, and probably you will ask yourself right now, so why now you guys move with this game? And I'm super happy that you asked your this question uh, because, because we're killing the game, we are taking a deep look and we are trying to analyze what's going on and if it's worth to kill. Uh, we take a deep look in the metrics and the results. First of all, as a publisher, we saw a trend. If you remember the December, it was really, really tough time in the testing area, especially with Facebook, high CPIs. And we saw really, really um, unregular, unusual uh, spikes numbers. Those we uh, checked and analyzed together with the CPMs, right? The CPI and the CPM is two factors that would uh, give you a wider picture of the game marketability and potential, right? Uh, we realized that the CPMs were too high uh, and we understood that we are competing against too many brands, e-commerce, whatever it was, you know, uh, as uh, as the charges about the impression. So our impression was competing with many, many, many other brands, campaigns, budgets. Uh, and that's the reason it was growing um, not proportionally. So we saw that we saw the trend in CPI. So basically, if you will see the uh, the right corner graph, you will see the trend of the CPI going lower and lower day by day. So we have the ad set, which has the dollar CPI, but if you will take a deep look, you will see that day by day, uh, the uh, trend is scaling down, the CPA is going down. So Facebook knows and learns to, to bring new users, as well as the gender and the age splitting was interesting. So be, uh, below 35 years, uh, it's our main core audience the, that actually provides the most uh, profit to the um, to the game uh, as well the healthy split between genders was something that show us that the game is marketable to a broader audience let's say so um, we love the concept it's something that we allow us to to say that we love the concept and we want to try to work on it and uh, one final thing is it's it, what what does it cost us to try again without putting any efforts we say guys we had this test it looks interesting, no efforts, no, no, we are keeping with our other games, but let's retest it later. And we retested in uh, January 2021, which was three weeks uh, difference, and we got a 41 uh, cent CPI, a drop of 60%, something that doesn't happen uh, so easily or so quickly. Um, the build, the game, uh, in-game metrics show stability, means the same retention of playtime that we saw before. Um, few things that made us more curious about the game is the keeping the scaling down trend of CPI. So if you it actually if you break down the ad set, uh, the campaign by days, you will see that the first then generated 65 cents CPI, and then it uh, reduced at 38 and then 29. So basically we, see, we saw that the CPI is, is going down as well. 
Uh, and one thing that I'll actually want to mention here, with all due to respect to, to, to Garvel team uh, and they know what they do, that specific game, that specific version wasn't so playable, all right? It was, has a lot of bugs and, and issues within it. Um, so in terms of playability, it was challenging, right? It was crashing, it was stacking, it, was, it wasn't full. There was so many stuff that was interrupting the experience of playing the game. Uh, so considering that factor and looking at this in the in-game retention, we saw there's something that more interesting to us here. Uh, we decided to give it a chance. The chance will be giving detailed feedback to put much more efforts in the game development and iteration, and to see what we can do, what, what we can do at that stage. We understand that we have two challenges. We have the challenges challenge of the CPI, and we have the challenge of the in-game metrics. Moving uh, forward uh, uh, simultaneously, and we are giving a feedback about the game uh, itself, uh, trying to optimize it. Right, so there's something really interesting in the game. The mechanic itself is amazing, and still we thought that uh, making the bridges stairs. All right, so it's a bridge race, uh, bridge race, but basically, <laughs> in fact, you are building uh, stairs. Uh, Seren um, suggested to turn it into the stairs. If you will see again, and you will see the, I'll just play it again for you, you will see that once you don't see the progression of the level, it gives you some intrigue, you know? It won't, you, you actually you want to keep playing to see what will be the next field. Here on the left side, if your opponent is actually on the last island, what is the point to keep playing? All right, so basically uh, kind of uh, limiting the playing area, creating sandbox, but giving the sense of moving forward, uh, give some interest to keep playing. Uh, we definitely work on the logic of the game, both of bricks and both of AIs. It means that you are collecting something in order to distribute it in the game. We understood that the proportion, the uh, rationality of how much you collect and how much you need in order to pass the level. Do you collect uh, one um, the sandbox, your colors, and you pass the level to the next bridge, or it won't be enough and you'll have to go back and to do another, uh, another uh, round? So all these uh, logics behind the brick collection and distribution, as well as AI uh, for bots, we wanted to make sure that the player, by playing in uh, IO game is playing with real bots, right? Uh, as well, giving some uh, more visual uh, progression to the game in terms of themes, UI, so basically understood what level you are, and you could uh, feel that you're actually moving in the levels because before that there were only one theme, right? Um, um, I actually could elaborate a lot about that, and actually it's a really important thing because here we started actually to work on the game, I would say, that actually the start of the game, uh, but we are short on time and I'll keep to the uh, timeline of the uh, of the iteration and testing process. So as we see, as you can see on the left side, we started uh, with one dollar in December. Uh, then few a few weeks afterwards, we tested the same build, the same creatives, didn't do nothing, uh, didn't put any efforts in the game, just started the campaign. We made the 41 cents uh, CPI with stable metrics. We understood that the CPI is adjustable and could be changed in future. Uh, we made playable build on 26th of January. At the same time, we run a new campaign with the new creatives. Uh, it sent 37 cents. It was 38, 36. We had uh, a few ad sets. Uh, yet, at the time, we had a build pretty stable build with 35% retention, uh, with minimal uh, changes, minimal uh, implementation of the game. Um, and at that point, we wanted to put more efforts on the video, all right, on the CPI reducing. And actually, one week after, we were able to crack the CPI with uh, this amazing creative, which we'll, we will see in the next slide. Uh, Interesting thing here I want to uh, to show you. If you will see, um, I don't know if you see my my, ah, you see my, my, my mouse, right? 
So you'll see here, so basically this V2, right? The, the, the first playable build was released on 26th of January. And the second build afterwards, the update of this one was on February. Means that during that time, the, game, the, the, the build, the game in the store was the same one. So we were expecting to see the same in-game metrics. But once we found this uh, winning creative, all right, with 21 uh, cent CPI, actually only the creative improved the in-game metrics. Like amazing, isn't it? Like not changing the game itself, the creative bringing better users, more appealing to audience, make them play more in the game. Uh, this is one of the conclusions at the bottom. I uh, hope we'll have enough time. Uh, but remember that uh, creatives have enormous power, right? Um, cool. On actually just fin finalize finalizing that. So on uh, February 11th, we released a new build, uh, which was much more uh, detailed, uh, much more uh, developed, let's say so. Uh, and it brought us uh, retention of 42%, playtime of 700, and actually we were ready to soft launch. Um, just showing shortly the evolution of uh, creatives, you can see that the main re the main change from first and the second one is the probably is the camera, is the grain, is the bricks distribution in the field and the stairs uh, mechanics. One, the winning one, all right, uh, actually simplifying the game play by maximum. So if you will see, and I'll just go back, you will see that the, the creative starts with only two bridges, only two guys, and the rule of five seconds. You basically in five seconds, you realize what's going on in the game. And if you will see here, so it's a bit noisy. You have like two game, two players playing, but because of the camera is zoomed in, you not really understand what's going on, right? So it is it's the connection between the camera, between how you show in the shortest time, the uh, gameplay of the game itself. Uh, all right, uh, give me a second, move forward. All right. So having a winning bet, uh, having a good uh, build, having a winning creative, we are going to iterations to test, trying to find the best creative to scale in a specific uh, network. At that time, uh, by implementing the ads, we are iterating the game, polishing it, and we inter we implementing the ends uh, the ads uh, on uh, beginning of March, and actually we are going through a lot of test che uh, checks. We are testing hundreds of creatives. Uh, you will see <laughs> later on, uh, and we are finding the creatives that will work best for specific network. It's really uh, important to understand that uh, each network, each social uh, platform has its own audience, different ages, different perception of the world, and they behave differently. So our goal as a publisher that's scaling the game is to understand which creative is appealing more uh, for what audiences, right? Uh, the amazing story here is you can see the creative uh, on the left, has been voiced over, all right? So there is a text and voiceover that tell just the gameplay and the rules of the game. And then we found the creative that actually makes its different uh, background and different colors. And then we found the that one, actually, this, which is the previous one plus that one, but from different angle. angle. And actually that bring in, uh, that was working on, on, on different network best, all right? Uh, it's a great, um, great achievement of uh, team of Lolita our uh, motion designer, uh, motion designers team lead. Uh, amazing, uh, amazing work, uh, really inspiring. So during the soft launch, we were testing the game, A-B testing um, different stuff in the game, collectibles, amount of bricks, the length of the bridges, colors, camera, a lot of stuff. Uh, and in parallel, we were creating uh, this enormous uh, number of videos, creatives, playables, and, and interactive end cards uh, just to try and test in, uh, in different social networks and to find the winning one per channel. Um, it's a really important time. 
as a, one of the conclusions later on, uh, you will see that soft launch is critical, critical time just to try and push as many tests as possible to adjust the gameplay, the game itself, to be it enjoyable and playable with LTV efforts, just trying to understand um, what will generate the best revenue for the game. Um, by the end of scaling, not by the end of the, but before we are scaling, right, where we are trying to uh, bring more users to the game, we see that the metrics are stable and we are able to keep the game on 40% retention day one with ads, all right? And I'm as a, I'm as a publisher of this game with a really, really deep feelings to it. I terribly, I, I, I hate the, the, the interstitials and bridge race, right? Still, the game is so awesome, probably, that people keep playing it, although there is interstitial in the middle of the gameplay. Uh, that's the magic. It's to find the, the best uh, 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 balance between those two. Uh, so amazing in-game metrics, including ads, uh, high marketability, both on social networks and SDK networks, um, the, the, um, the gap between LTV and CPI, all those give us the room to grow. And I'm talking about now, right? So we, it's, 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 it's a long time since we published and, and global launched the game, but we are still having this room to scale up and grow the, the game. Um, by now the game is a great success. It's a uh, really pleasant and good feeling to see that numbers, this, these tables. Uh, so the game reached first place in 67 countries in iOS and 47 and on Android. And it could be the, the numbers even, even more, uh, even not, not the better numbers and we have more countries. So it was most downloadable game, mobile game uh, in, April, in April, worldwide, NUS, Android, iPad, iPhones. It's amazing success. Uh, for a game that started its way from a uh, dollar CPI. Um, many plans for a future. We want to make the feeling of progression in the game much more uh, vast and, 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 and strong to keep players, as you saw, as you remember, 4% retention day 30. It's really, really impressive for a hyper casual game. So we see great potential here to uh, scale up and to enlarge the LTV, uh, keeping working on the game, um, definitely by adding new content and uh, thinking of really uh, so, uh, um, smart things uh, to improve the game. As a conclusion, I'm so I'm actually have one minute left. Uh, you guys have your lunch probably, <laughs> uh, but i um, definitely will mention a few points here. Uh, as a conclusion from this case study, from the uh, from what we experienced, uh, you had so many games you developed, you worked on them, spent time. Don't kill it right away. Just give it. I'm not telling you just not giving up on a game, but try to think how you utilize, how you recycle again, huh? how you recycle your game with the trendish elements, how you take the trend and take your close to KPIs previous game and make it one. Um, guys, I have one minute uh, here, the, the administrator uh, saying that I'm uh, overdue. Um, it was a pleasure uh, talking to you. Uh, you can find a lot of data and information in, your, in our website. Come to participate in our contest. And uh, I'm really, really, really uh, encourage you not to struggle by yourself. Join Supersonic. Let's make hits together. Thank you, guys.